Gary, what time do you wake up in the morning? Uh, my, my discipline, ideally, would be to get up super early in the morning. To me, the most productive time of day by far is early morning, like 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 would be late. As it is right now, I've been working on a, a hectic schedule, so it means I get to bed a little bit later. So I've been getting up around 7. Seven's pretty much my time to get up. When I'm writing the book or when I'm doing something special, then I rejig and I go to bed earlier and I get up early. Getting in two to three hours of productive time before the rest of the world's awake is the most delicious thing one can do for oneself. Agreed. Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do I wake up in the morning? I wake up in the morning because I'm excited about life. Because there's people and there's ideas and there's explorations to be had that day. Uh, because I have my ideas about what I want to get done, but I'm not arrogant enough to believe that those are the necessarily the most important or the only things that will happen that day. But I just have an innate curiosity, and I like to challenge myself. I'm more self-competitive, not so much competitive with others. Um, so to me, every day is an opportunity to see, you know, the question really comes down to one simple thing. How do you make that day matter? How do you make that day meaningful enough to be memorable? I love that, that you're competitive, but not in the sense that we hear a lot where you've got to be better than the next guy, which I know that that's true, but I like that. Talk about the difference between self-competition versus competition with everyone out there or perceived competition, and then you end up creating enemies or vice versa. The, the, the downside, the underbelly of being com competitive by nature is that the tr traditional definition of competition has you in a perennial state of non-success. You just can't win at it. If I'm comparing my, I do CrossFit. The exercise of choice, at least in this moment for me in the last year, year and a half has been CrossFit. If I were competing with those around me at my gym, my gym's one of the best in the country. If I were competing against those in my gym, there's always gonna be people who are far, far, far more advanced, far superior athletically. They, their level of fitness is off the charts. They're monkeys, they're not even people. So if I were comparing myself to those people, I would, I would always be in a deficit. I'd always be thinking what's missing, what I haven't accomplished, right? But if I'm self-competitive, suddenly it flips the script. So now I'm looking at everybody who's working out, those 50 other people, 30 other people, 70 other people that are working out at the same time, and every one of them is an opportunity to pick up a trick and learn something and model, remodel something. I learn more by having relationships and dialogue and just observing these other people so that I can push myself further faster. So I'm, I don't look, I'm not in competition with them. I'm in competition with my own sense of well-being and discipline and what, how do I push myself because I'll progress faster by not competing than by competing. Was that always the case? Because I notice a lot of younger people are very competitive, whereas I s tend to see people maybe after 40, they tend to realize like, you know what? No, I think that it's more about my goals and not comparing how well someone else is doing over me. Is that always the yeah, case? I think we, we all come out of the womb competitive on some level, academically, athletically, uh, in terms of our looks and our social popularity and all sorts of, you know, yeah, absolutely. And that's a growing phase, you know, because there are the passages, I forget what they are. There's the, the athlete and there's the, you know, you grow into the statesman and then you grow into the, the community elder, whatever, the wise person, whatever. Uh, those are natural steps in our evolution as, as uh, in this life journey. Um, and I think age has a lot of advantages, but underneath all of that is a sense that I'm okay. Underneath all that is what I think is the, is, is the key to success and well-being, not just professionally, but personally, which is self-belief. It's okay to like yourself. It's okay to believe in yourself. It's okay to also be patient and give yourself permission to know that life is a process, not an event. It's not about a report card because that's a static idea. It's a snapshot 
that has nothing to do with your aspiration. Your aspiration is so much more. It's so more, more dimensional, more long-term, it's a vision. And if you don't, aren't driven by a vision and you're only looking at, it's like a corporation looking at quarterly profits and not doing the right thing long-term. What's best for the company, for the employees, for their stakeholders and for the, and, and for the consumer. They're totally opposing views of life. So if you have self-belief and if you, can, if, you can, if you can really dig in and find within yourself and celebrate that which is, and sometimes people can't, oftentimes people can't, because they forget who they are. People forget how amazing and unique and special they are. I had an emergency room doctor years ago, I was giving a talk somewhere and he approached me afterward and basically was very lackluster, very low energy, compl complaining of himself that he was tremendously average. Um, and I asked him a few questions and it was shocking in the span of a few moments what I learned about this guy that was extraordinary. So he was responsible not only for being an ER doctor, which is already like, oh my gosh, but he was responsible for this large hospital, um, uh, it was a series of hospitals. He was in charge of um, the culture of the, of the hospital chain. All incoming nurses, all incoming doctors, all personnel of any stripe who came into this system, which is a system that welcomes on a daily basis people in trauma, people in fear, people in the most crucial critical moment of their life, surrounded by family who are equally concerned and upset and vulnerable. So he's the guy responsible for telling, teaching doctors and nurses and everyone who's going to interface with the public how to be better at what they do, how to be more humane at what they do, how to understand and be empathetic in ways they might otherwise not have chosen to be. His impact on the lives of all the doctors, all the nurses, not to mention the thousands and thousands, countless numbers of people who trafficked through that environment on a daily, literally daily basis, is inestimable. It is not susceptible of measurement. It is beyond enormity, not just because of the numbers of people, but because of the impossibility of measuring how deeply crucial those moments are and how they are met. Here's a guy who thought he was boring. Here's a guy who thought, I'm, I'm just typical and average and what have you. So what I asked him to do as a personal favor, not really knowing me, was if he would go home and, and, and call upon three nurses and three doctors currently under the roof of this hospital, and three nurses and doctors who had, he had trained but had matriculated and gone on elsewhere in their life. It's a dozen people didn't have to be mathematically precise. Reach out to these kinds of people that you've had intimate interaction with and ask them not to respond in the moment, but to be thoughtful, think about it, and come back to you if they're willing and tell you the truth. And the truth is the answer to the following questions. Who am I to you? What influence have I had in your life? How have you altered your view or or habits or, or behaviors as a result of our interactions, what value do I represent, if any, good, bad, or indifferent? He called me a month later. He, he was like a changed man. He was ebullient. He was, his voice went up an octave. He was excited. He was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea who I was in the world in the eyes of so many people I respect. Anybody can do that exercise, we just don't think to do it. 